Hello everybody and welcome back to Promise Gaming and more Plague Inc. Evolved Custom Scenarios. We've had a good couple of weeks, haven't we? We've been doing some pretty fun scenarios. Beyond Human, of course, being quite impressive. Jurassic Planet, and of course, you guys got more Xenomorphs, so... Yeah, some pretty fun stuff going on here. Now, I'm sure some people might be interested in me continuing down the list and working on slightly more accurate zombies, which, uh... I would be tempted to do, except uh, it's basically the semi-realistic zombie plague had to get re-uploaded with some modifications, so... While I'm sure it's still quite good, uh, it is ultimately something we've already done before with perhaps some improvements. I don't know if that's something you guys want me to do or not, but... In the meantime, let's do something else involving zombies. Let's go to Nazi Zombies! There we go, based off of Call of Duty Zombies from Treyarch. Uses plague to wipe out humanity as the zombies rather than defeat them as seen in Call of Duty. They say that it's quite easy, so perhaps I will have to play it on a slightly harder one. But, uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. I mean, Nazi zombies. You know, it's a little overdone, but <laughs> why not? It's a, it's a good excuse for a necro virus. I like it. Let's just do it on brutal difficulty. I mean, you know what? No, never mind. Let's do it on mega brutal. Screw it. I'm good at what I do. Element 115. Okay, meteor crash. A meteor crash has... Accord in Japan. Really? Axis scientists have suppressed the gas it was giving off and taken it to Germany, where they hope it to build the perfect soldier. You know, I have no idea if um, Nazi zombies in uh, Call of Duty actually has any sort of lore technically with it. I remember in Call of Duty uh, Modern Warfare and stuff, they technically had like some German scientist going on about, you know, this time travel device and blah, 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 or whatever it was. Hey. I mean, meh, maybe there's some sort of lore, maybe it's just all kind of goofball stuff. If there is one, though, I don't know of it, and maybe some of you guys can let me know down in the comment section below. Of, co of course, of course, not all the gas has been contained to Germany. It will begin to spread to the outside world soon. Okay, we're back in 1942. The Nazis are actually turning into zombies now. Noice. Transmission, we have more subjects. Scientists will kidnap more people to be subjects to the gas from the starting country and other countries. Increases infectivity. Uh, so that the author is not uh, just aware, just in case he is not, perhaps English is not his first language or it's a simple error. Uh, two usually has to do with in addition to something if you're going to have, you know, two O's in it. So I'd like to go to that too. Whereas, just in your case, you're looking for T-O. So, may want to fix that. Easy typo, easy fix. Animal experiments. Scientists expose animals like dogs, who are more likely to escape than humans, to the gas. See what I mean? Increases land transmission, slight mutation chance. Okie dokie doo. Symptoms. Enhanced speed. Infected people show enhanced speed, they may be noticed. Very little bit of severity, and as far as I can tell, no infectivity, which I would actually expect if the zombies are able to wander around a little bit faster. I mean, that's kind of crucial, but okay. Abilities. We have our drug resistance. Appears to be the standard thing there. Heat resistance and cold resistance. And meteor detonation. One-time use. Detonate the meteor in Japan. I thought it got moved to German. No, the gas got moved to Germany. Never mind. Detonate the meteor in Japan to release lots of gas into the air to infect more countries. Increase the severity and slightly lethality. Okay, so basically a spore burst in the Crow virus. That could be kind of good. I guess we'll go for more subjects for now. That leads to even more subjects. Scientists take even more subjects to be exposed to the gas. Subjects can infect one and other, you mean another, via simply breathing near them. Increases infectivity. Sure, we'll grab that too. Okay. Then we have aerial survival. I think that's supposed to be an E there, but okay. Gas is able to survive longer in air, increases air infectivity. Seven DNA points for some pretty decent infectivity there. Seven for the animal experiments. Now the question is, do we want to go for some mutation chance? Possibly. I mean, if we're going for Mega Brutal, then a little bit of luck is often involved. So a little tiny bit of mutation chance wouldn't be so bad. Still doing okay in Germany. Are we going to see, like, a transmission that allows us to, like, directly infect Hitler? That'd be kind of funny, right? Probably a little bit. We don't really want the severity right now. Let's go for the aerial survival, and we can't unlock anything else probably until we get the animal experiments. So I'm going to go ahead and go on a limb and say we have to go for that mutation chance no matter what pretty early on. I mean, only eight zombies are in the world, and they're not even zombies yet. They're just infected. So yeah, we'll go ahead and grab that. That leads to water survival. When subjects or infected drink and the gas is passed into the water, it has a better chance to survive and infect. And also, air, air animal experiments too. Scientists take in animals like small monies and apes to test on. Increases land transmission and mutation chance. 
Honestly, so I know a lot of people... <laughs> I get emails and comments and stuff from people all the time saying, I'm sorry about my English, I know it bothers you so much. Uh, for the record, it's not really so much about that. It, it does... It does... Personally, when I tried to create scenarios and stuff back in the day, obviously none of them got published because I didn't... I wasn't happy with the result. But it's really not that difficult to just kind of plug things into, like, let's say Microsoft Word and do a simple spell check. And I really do feel like it goes a very long way to try and increase the overall professionalism of a scenario. And that's one of the reasons I criticize it, because it's a very easy thing for people to improve. I know that a lot of people watch these uh, custom scenarios not only because they're entertained, but some of them might want to create scenarios themselves. And uh, the feedback that I give to scenarios might actually be helpful to some of them. I know that in a lot of ways I've become kind of a critic in the Plague Inc. community, so I figure it's a very easy thing to fix and it can go kind of a long way. Or at the very least, a lack of proper spelling and grammar uh, can kind of be a hindrance. You know, it may, it may not go, it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like music, you know, a soundtrack in the back of a very good movie. You don't really notice the good mu music, but it actually does a lot to overall improve its quality. You know, you don't sit there and think, wow, that was some really good music. It just, it, it exists to be subtle. That's the point. Bad music, you notice. Good music, if it's really done well, you don't really notice it. But it does a lot to overall enhance the theme, the quality of the movie itself. I would consider spelling to be kind of in a similar boat. You know, it's a subtle thing. If it's bad spelling, you notice it. If it's good, you don't notice it, but at least it doesn't hurt the movie, or sorry, your scenario, and overall makes it a slightly better quality. So, very easy thing for people to fix. That's just why I harp on it as much as I do. Enhanced Strength. Infected show Enhanced Strength. It's only two DNA. We'll grab that now. That leads to Insomnia. Inability to sleep makes people irritable and less productive. Okay, that's a bit more severity, so let's focus on some transmissions instead. The Cross Species Transmission. Although it will begin to, uh, sorry, begin between humans and animals in captivity, animals who escape can infect uninfected humans in the outside world. Mutation chance. And then survivability. Gas can survive in the air and in the water for much longer, increasing air and water transmission. Yeah, all right, we'll go with that. Uh, transmission, by the way, is also misspelled. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a second S in there, but that's fine. Again, it's just a matter of spell check, you know. It's not a huge deal. I know what you're trying to go for. It's just little things, little things that can be improved. This is going to cost us 16 DNA points in order to get better air and water transmission, and I would definitely like to get that. But then we'll uh, buckle down on a bit more mutation chance. We'll see how powerful that is, or rather how potent that is. And uh, see if we can carry ourselves to victory. Keep in mind, at some point, we've got to unlock the zombies themselves and get, get working on that, you know? So, sooner that happens, probably the better. Alright, survivability is a thing now. Then we'll go for the cross-species transmission. We'll just finish off all transmissions. And, uh, hopefully. Hopefully that mutation chance saves me a lot of DNA. Okay, so we've almost, almost hit critical mass in Germany. Right now, we only have 44, some, well, about 50 some million people infected. It's not a lot at this stage in the game, considering we've been playing for well over a year now. Usually I've got a little bit better speed there. There we go, they finally detected us in Poland of all places. Alright, that's fun. Go for the cross-species transmission. And now we finish off all the infectivity. Symptoms! I guess we'll just go ahead and grab the insomnia. That leads to hunger pains. Infected show desire for food. Becoming more hungry. Constant saliva drool... That's how you're spelling drooling? Okay. Allows for inf increased infectivity through water and fluids. Grab. Nocturnal. Infected show no desire to sleep or any need for it. And then lust for food. Infected become hungry enough to attack anyone who denies them food. Some call that obsessive compulsive. Well, not really. It's more than that. Scientists concerned about element 115. China got infected pretty quick. Turkey's working on the cure. Alright, so we're getting started on that pretty quick here, and people are shutting down their, um, wow. People are shutting down their ports and their airports, like, very suddenly. We barely made any headway in India, but just by the fact that a billion people in China got infected, they're like, oh no! Stop that! And I don't blame them one bit. Let's go for that drug resistance. We may need meteor detonation as sort of a backup option. The big trick here is to make sure that we actually are able to start the zombies before we get cured, and they're working on that pretty quickly. And I don't really have a lot of mutation chance, it seems, working to my advantage here, nor do I see the zombies yet. So I guess we'll go for lust for food. Cannibalism, okay. Allows corpse transmission to occur. Uh, chance mutation there as well. Well, that sounds all well and good, but we're kind of running out of gas. We're just not... Yeah, they're working on that cure even faster now. I don't see this working out well for me on Mega Brutal. I'm probably going to have to restart because we're just out of gas. We can't infect very quickly here, despite the fact that we do have the drug resistance. 
Um, and the result is going to be that we can't get more DNA, so we can't unlock zombies. So, okay, not knowing enough about the scenario, looks like I've underestimated how long it takes to get to the zombies. Also, I relied too much on mutation chance. So, let's go ahead and restart the scenario. I'll meet you back approximately where we were, and we will continue. Okay, so we went for the cannibalism finally. I did take um, drug resistance a little bit earlier than before. Kind of worked down those symptoms to get a bit more severity before we started actually getting around the world to so get more DNA out of red bubbles. And that seems to have given me at least a little bit of extra fuel to work with for the time being. Now we know where the zombies are. Once you get cannibalism, that becomes available to you. So, while they all are working on that cure, um, I probably can afford to go ahead and grab Lust for Food first, and then we can go for zombies pretty easily without having to worry much about it. Of course, uh, I did see that we got blocked out of Greenland, and we're having a lot of trouble in places like Africa and stuff. It feels like you kind of have to go under the radar a lot more, so we may want to go for the zombies earlier rather than later, and uh, we will try to move the zombie hordes over, or we could just detonate the meteor, which might do a bit of work for us. Lust for blood increases zombie violence and lethality. Zombies need brains! Why do zombies always need brains? Like, why is that the thing for zombies? Couldn't be anything else, it has to be brains. I mean, I, I think of, like, Walking Dead, they just want to eat your flesh in general. But brains specifically, that became a thing somewhere. Alright, we're turning corpses into zombies. Alright, so we should start infecting places pretty rapidly. Um, I guess we could go for... Well, let's think. This is more severity, which is good for combat advantage, but not necessarily good for spreading the disease and trying to get more zombies. We could go for the Horde ability to try... Sorry, not Horde. Uh, raise the dead... That increases horde size. Okay, so this does this does unlock the traveling ability, right? What's this? Horde boost gives a general boost to all zombie abilities. Mutation, more mutation, hindering the cure. Could be useful actually. Let's go ahead and grab that. Let's go ahead and grab horde ability as well. So I'm now yes, I am able to move things around. Good. Okay. So uh, we could start working on some islands, or we could start making headway in a few more crucial areas. For example, I would like to go from Spain to Morocco so I can get a bit more presence here in Africa, get that ball a rolling. There you go. And of course, as I get to new countries, I am getting more red bubbles, which I guess is kind of useful too. So let's go from, let's say, Finland to Norway. There we go. We got a zombie. Oh, I guess we already infected that technically. Okay, let's go from Finland to Sweden. Uh, element 115 is turning people into zombies. Yes. Yes, it is. Hmm. So I guess meteor detonation... We kind of have to do that before we get cured if we want that to be at all useful, right? Hmm. Lust for blood mutated. Okay. I'm not sure we're going to get that, to be honest. We have no zombies in some places like Australia, which is a bit of a problem for me. Yeah, this is... this is. Oh, God. Here comes ZCOM really early. Really early. And I have... Yeah, I have nowhere near a good enough spread to justify this. At least we are able to get out of the USA somewhere. So let's go to Mexico, start working our way down here. Start infecting a few places. Um, I, I don't think there's much point in going for the meteor detonation now. Although maybe, I mean we could. Maybe we should just try it and see what happens. I mean the cure is worked on, but can we get anywhere? No, it did absolutely nothing once the cure is done, which is kind of what I expected. I'm actually thinking this is going to be yet another failure, to be honest. Um, symptoms. We do have corpse aggression. Increases corpse transmission and decreases zombie decay. Pretty useful. Grab. Severe mutation. The longer you have been infected with the war it is, you become lighter and more agile as a zombie now and become almost animalistic. Zombies now exhale the gas. Infective, but again, the infection stuff really is only that useful uh, when the cure is not done. So if we had gone for this route earlier rather than trying to play around with things like meteor detonation, maybe we would have been in better shape. Zombie animals, combat capabilities could be pretty important. Resistance, basic weaponry such as blunt instruments and stabbing weapons. Yeah, I mean, it's all well and good. Hey, more transmission, what's this? Corpse survival, gas is more comfortable inside of fluids within the dead. And then animal corpse, gas can survive in the corpses of infected animals as well as human corpses. I just feel like at this point, by the time that stuff becomes unlocked, it's a little bit too little too late, you know what I mean? So I guess we could go for the zombie animals. Hellhounds, these beasts, <laughs> I mean, I mean, zombie dogs, you know, we love these guys in COD. These beasts don't only serve zombies while in battle, but can also teleport, form, place to place. Increasing zombie strength and speed. I mean, it's pretty good. 
Um, I guess we'll go ahead and grab that to just make him more effective in general. The problem is, because we haven't gotten much of a spread, we're kind of des devouring the uh, population of these countries kind of quickly without actually making any meaningful um, advance. So, a bit of a problem there. Let's go from Canada to Greenland. Uh, do we have any presence in Iceland? No. Let's go from the UK to Iceland. Let's go from, oh, I don't know, let's say Indonesia to New Guinea. Get those going. I'm really concerned about ZCOM. That's the problem. ZCOM just grew stronger in Brazil. And I think they're about to set up here in New Guinea, which is a bit of a problem for me. But we're getting a lot of DNA now. So let's go to the Philippines. Let's go from Korea to Japan. Let's go from, let's say, the USA to Cuba. Um, let's go from West Africa to Central Africa, just because it's a more central location that is useful to me. Let's go from Saudi Arabia to Madagascar. And that's most of the islands done. I guess we'll go to New Zealand as well. What else do we want to do? Resistance, I guess, make them a bit more effective since we know that the ZCOM is about to become a bit of a problem for me. But we are we are still killing fairly well here in New Guinea, at least for the time being. How are we doing in Central America? We're still technically making progress. ZCOM isn't able to stomp us out yet. Elemental resistance. Zombies develop a strange resistance to fire, water, air, and electricity. Slightly decreases zombie decay rate, increases infectivity in all climates. Again, at this point, infectivity is not that useful. Resilience. Better to withstand against light firearms. Okay. Hmm, I like the idea of reducing zombie decay rate. That actually is something I think gets uh, commonly um, ignored in a lot of zombie stuff. They're kind of thinking about just the numbers game. Actually having them reduce their decay rate can go a long way just keeping yourself sustained for a long time. I kind of like it. Electrical zombies. Most effective. They are fast and agile with ranged attacks. Increase zombie combat effectiveness greatly. And napalm zombies. Reanimated zombies have a chance of becoming flaming zombies that explode when killed. Greatly increases reanimated zombie strength. Okay, we probably want to get that, right? I like increasing zombie strength. So we are, again, making still progress in New Guinea, which is a good thing. Let's go from... I'll keep as many zombies in Central America as possible. Let's go from the Caribbean down to Colombia and start surrounding them. Work our way toward Brazil, which I expect is going to be the big problem for us. Uh, we're about to finish off all these islands, so I think we're okay there. It's mostly continue spreading in places like Africa and so on. So let's just make them stronger if we can. Let's go for the electrical zombies, increase their combat effectiveness even better. Kill that Z-Com before they can set up in new places. That is the goal. Now, of course, we're not able to take advantage of the millions of zombies in Europe and Asia very well. Um, let's go for... Let's go for Undead Army. That leads to Horde 2, increasing their speed and size. Zombie Breach in New Guinea. Significantly reduced their combat effectiveness, so we should hit critical mass there pretty easily. Still growing in Central America. That's good. Let's go from Colombia down to Peru. I want to surround them if I can. Are they setting up in Iceland? They are, but I've already hit critical mass there, so we should be able to beat that down pretty easily. Let's go from Peru to Bolivia. Okay, Zombie Zcom destroyed in Iceland. Good. Let's go from Peru to Argentina. And we should have Brazil more or less surrounded, so if I can infect most of the population, I can get a mas massive three- or four-pronged attack on Brazil and try to overwhelm them with sheer numbers. But Central America is gone, and New Guinea is gone as well. Good. Okay. That's what I like to see. Let's grab some heat resistance. Not that I think it matters too much, but okay. Um, Horde boost? I don't know how much that's going to work for me, but we'll give it a shot. Let's also grab Horde 2, just so we can have much better hordes when we do need to move against Zcom. They are trying to set up a new one down in South Africa, which I don't think I can accept. Let's go here. There we go. Get that process rolling. Okay. So we're not in Botswana still. What else are we missing? Zimbabwe and Botswana. Well, that's no problem. Let's go ahead and get into those just so that they can't set up anywhere else. Whoops, I think I went to... Um, I did. I went to South Africa again. That's not where I wanted. Come on. Can I please infect Botswana? Okay. Apparently that's not possible because I didn't realize the borders of South Africa technically blocked this off. All right, Zimbabwe. Can I... Can I not? Hang on. We'll just we'll try, try that again. No! Dang it! This click. Try that again. Zimbabwe, Botswana, there we go. Alright, now we're in every country in the world. So we've managed to kill everybody in Colombia, Peru, and Argentina. So now's the time, probably, to grab Horde 3, and then start the process of moving zombies over from, let's say, Colombia and Argentina into Brazil, which already has a presence. 
I think at this point we should be able to win pretty darn easily. We don't need to upgrade the hordes anymore. Let's go from Bolivia next. Now we're only getting like a few thousand zombies. Like it's not in the, or the millions quite yet, which is what I ultimately would want, but I'm not sure we're going to have enough DNA to justify that given that we've already finished off most of the countries. Trying to set up in Sudan, instant failure for them. Let's go from Colombia here again. Now notice these zombies in Colombia are dying off very rapidly. So this is where the decay rate would help you uh, keep a pretty strong presence to kind of sustain yourself and keep working against them. But we're having some trouble there. We're also not really getting any more DNA. So this is once again where I feel like we could be in some trouble. We're trying to hit critical mass. We're almost getting there. The numbers keep bouncing up and down. I think we've got this. We're just sort of waiting on Brazil. Horrific slaughter in Brazil. The population was slaughtered. That will work to my advantage, I hope. Yeah, I think we've got it. It's just getting really, really tight. Let's just sort of see what happens, because at this point there's nothing I can do but sit back and wait. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Now that there's less population to eat from, uh, looks like the numbers are kind of starting to decline. I think this actually may still be a loss for us, which is incredibly frustrating. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that we just get such an inferior spread. So I'm probably going to have to restart yet again. Yeah, this is a loss. I'm going to have to restart yet again. Well, unless the hardened skin works to my advantage. No, I don't think it will. And what I'm going to do instead this time is I'm going to get those zombies, and I'm going to start rushing up this tree to things like Severe Mutation, and try to get as much infectivity working to my advantage before the cure is done. So let's start again, and uh, this is what happens when you play on Mega Brutal. Let's give it another shot. Okay, yeah. This, uh, this worked out a lot better. So the real strategy to go for on this sucker is to actually rush the zombies pretty much as quick as you can. I didn't even bother with some of these last transmissions. I mean, they might have been a little bit helpful to get more infectivity, but ultimately what you need to do is rush the zombies as quickly as you can before that cure gets out there. And then you possibly can worry about, you know, spreading the infectivity via hordes and stuff. And honestly, by the time you get there, you have enough severity that you're getting enough DNA from every red bubble from uh, getting to a new country that it pretty much becomes self-sustaining. So it turns out, going for the spread, not quite as important as going for the zombies as quickly as possible. And then, yeah, working up these roots up here did increase the infectivity pretty nicely. I will say I was a little bit disappointed by the meteor detonation. It only seemed to infect two new countries for me, uh, and I did that before the cure was done, so it was kind of, kind of lackluster, but okay. Z common Sweden is down, we're about to finish off Peru, and that should be it. The entire world should be zombies now. Uh, with the exception, I think, of Libya. Hang on. We'll finish up Libya real quick. Uh, let's just go for some heat resistance to speed it up a little bit technically, and nothing else really matters. There we go. Element 115 has destroyed humanity. There were a couple more symptoms I guess we could look at real quick. Uh, resilience did allow us to withstand light firearms, and hardened skins uh, allowed us to protect against military-grade weapons. And finally, hardened bones, even a good old headshot, won't kill them the first time. But otherwise, yeah, focus really hard on your zombies. It comes back to the kind of age-old question with the necrovirus. Do I go for high infectivity in the early game, or do I go for incredibly potent zombies as quickly as possible and let that carry me to victory? And uh, I'm, I'm increasingly leaning more and more toward the latter. I do find that more uh, impressive zombies as early as possible before that cure gets out there can be a key to success in Mega Brutal, and it looks like this is no different. So, okay. We managed to destroy humanity, and there we go. Nazi zombies. I mean, granted, it does seem at some point that it has a lot less to do with the fact that they're Nazis and a lot more to do with the fact that they're just zombies releasing some sort of mysterious gas, but hey, okay, why not? One star! Well, I guess it's because it took so long. Yeah, the early game of this scenario is incredibly difficult to work with. Um, I was able to get to cannibalism before they even detected me this time, but maybe you do want to prioritize that drug resistance a little bit earlier just for the sake of speed. Because otherwise your score gets really, really quite low. But that is sort of the problem of starting off in a wealthy area surrounded by other wealthy areas. It just takes absolutely forever to make any meaningful progress. But for this particular playthrough, I mean, I, I guess starting in Germany kind of makes sense now, doesn't it? So, yeah, overall it's a pretty good scenario. I mean, there's a lot of customization involved in this. I do think some spell check would fix a lot of errors. Otherwise, uh, it's it's not that bad. It's It's pretty well done. Again, lots of customization. You know, nothing really was taken for granted in this scenario. Um, and I think that the thematically it more or less makes sense. I mean, the Nazi aspect is just sort of a little bit, you know, out there for those who play Call of Duty. But otherwise, it's not a bad zombie scenario. I approve. Well done. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, we like the scenario. Thank you all for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed. If so, then be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And I, as always, will see you guys next time. <laughs>